Coming up here on GMA, we begin the power of water and rivers across America, talking about the Mississippi River and the Delta, also these islands in the wetlands of Louisiana. Behind me, a boat that we'll be taking out to show you Isle de Jean Charles. It is one of the communities, well, the first in America to be displaced by a rising sea and several other factors. We'll tell you about the island that went from five miles wide back in the 1950s to now only a quarter mile square. On top of all of that, there's much to get to in the fallout from the Pentagon leak. What we're learning this morning about Chinese spy balloons, more of them, and the search for answers after a mass shooting at an Alabama Sweet 16 party. We're live on the scene there this morning. You'll see those stories and so much more right here on GMA. If you're looking to snag a 2023 KSAT Fiesta medal, our giveaways run through April 27th. You'll need to tune into KSAT to find out where each medal giveaway is each day. I'm going to reveal location coming up at 645 right here during GMSA. Well, still to come, we're tracking traffic all morning long. Right now, things look really good out there. 410 at Somerset Road, a few cars coming right at the screen. There's 410 at Ray Ellison Boulevard and no problems to report. It's a beautiful spring morning out there, folks. Grab a jacket down to 51 at San Antonio International. Let's look out there with live cam. We're starting nice and cool at 51 degrees, not too bad. But we're gonna check in with Mike to see when that humidity will make its way back in the forecast. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. I hope you had a great weekend. It is Monday, April 17th. Thanks so much for joining us today. Maybe warm coffee this morning and a light sweater, at least for the morning hours. 51 degrees out at the airport. Nice, cool start today. And we're already looking ahead to the beginning of Fiesta 2023 later this week. Humid. <laughs> yeah, and nice this morning. It was gorgeous yesterday. Low humidity all day long, but humidity is going to be coming back on in here. However, we get a break from it for the weekend. So good, good timing on that. But yeah, I mean, what would you what else would you expect for the start of Fiesta? But it being on the humid side, you got a lot of clear skies out there. Beautiful view of the little waning crescent moon. Of course, it's going to be new moon on Thursday and uh, with those clear skies, that's allowing temperatures to drop down 53. We actually went up one degree from last hour. Low 50s, though, well below normal by a good uh, six degrees or so, six, seven degrees and 55 Canyon Lake, 49 right there at Randolph, Seguin, low 40s still in parts of the hill country. Thanks to those clear skies out there. Thanks to the very dry air and hardly any breeze to speak of. That's why temperatures have dropped down. Oak is still on the high side side, moderate mold, little bits of everything else. The update account is going to be coming out in about an hour and a half or so. So temperatures will stay low 50s here in town, 40s in the hill country. And like Steph was saying, sweater, jacket, sweatshirts, really good idea this morning. And then boy, we warm up quickly throughout the morning, 73 at noon. High temperature today is going to make it up to 79. Almost identical to yesterday, except one or two extra clouds out there. Now, there is a small chance, very small chance, stray shower to pop up out in parts of the hill country out to the west. Although with the very dry air, I think anything that does fall, most of it would evaporate before it reached the ground. But just don't be surprised by that, that very small chance. Now, we do have small rain chances each and every day, thanks to all the humidity in here. We'll talk about that, take a look ahead to the weekend, and of course, the first day of Fiesta. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. Been yeah. pretty good at yeah. this point. Very good. quiet. Yeah, still okay, very good, good Mike. And, and my corner of the studio haven't tracked any problems. We have entered 6 a.m., guys, without any issues out on the roadway. But we know it's going to get busier right now. 10 at Pro Banthera, the east and westbound lanes have stayed pretty consistent. But other shots at Trans Guide does show the commute is picking up just a smidge. But thankfully, no slowdowns. And we're not seeing any red back here on the map. Just plenty of green out there. Open roadways. You may see a delay at the coffee line. In fact, I just ran out of coffee this morning, so I may have to go swing by a little bit later, but no delays again here on the map. It's just plenty of green out there, but still plenty of construction. Let's talk about travel times because things are also pretty much stayed consistent here. I 10 westbound. If you're traveling in from Seguin, it should be about a 29 minute commute here to the Alamo City, about 33 minutes along 87 northbound. If you're traveling in from Lavernia and for friends down in Floresville, should be about 29 minutes. But let's get it back here on Transguide 410 there at East Houston, even 410 at WW White shows the commute has stayed pretty steady. We're going to talk about some of the road closures, but we're also going to take a look at some of the gas prices if you need to fuel up for another work week. Guys. 
Thank you, sir. New this morning, San Antonio police are investigating a late night road rage shooting. Happened just after nine on Tezel near Gil New Gilbo Road. Police tell us two drivers hit each other several times, then started shooting at each other. One of the vehicles had a woman and a six month old baby in it. They were both hurt and taken to the hospital. Both drivers were detained. Also overnight, the search is on for a stabbing suspect. This happened just after 10 at Jackson Keller and Vance Jackson. Police tell us the victim and another man got into a fight with another man about money, and that's when he was stabbed. That suspect ran off. Next month will mark one year since the tragedy at Robb Elementary in Uvalde. Now some of the families of survivors are raising money to try to send their kids to Disneyland for the week of May 24th. The goal is to get the kids away from Uvalde that week so they can share in happier times. We spoke with A.J. Martinez and Janine Carrizales, two survivors of the tragedy, and their moms about what this trip would mean to them. I know who yeah. I want to meet. Who do you want to meet? The mouse. Well, I wanted to really go because of Mickey Mouse. It's just a get them out of here and be kids. And I mean, I wish there was, I, mean, I really wish we didn't have to do all this to get away on May 24th. But, you know, I really wish this never happened. The money raised would pay for five of these survivors and their families. The goal is to raise $50,000 to cover tickets, hotel, travel, and food expenses. As of yesterday, they have raised over $24,000. Topping your morning headlines, a delay in Dominion Voting Systems' $1.6 billion defamation case against Fox News. Opening arguments were set to start today. But as ABC's Lindsay Watts explains, there are now reports that Fox has made a late effort to settle the case. This morning, a late breaking change to a trial two years in the making. The judge overseeing Dominion Voting Systems defamation case against Fox News announced last night he was delaying the case until Tuesday morning. The Wall Street Journal, which is owned by Fox boss Rupert Murdoch, reporting Fox has made a late push to settle the dispute out of court citing people familiar with the decision. If it proceeds, the high stakes trial could put some of the biggest names at Fox News on the witness stand. You're going to see superstar witnesses that could testify. Dominion is suing Fox News and its parent company, News Corp, for $1.6 billion, arguing the network damaged its business by knowingly airing false claims that Dominion machines rigged the 2020 election in favor of Joe Biden. It will be impossible to ever know the true fair, accurate election results. Dominion alleges that while Fox hosts were promoting election lies on air, they were privately expressing disbelief in texts and emails. Fox has argued it was merely reporting on the allegations because they were newsworthy. But the judge in the case has already ruled Fox can't use that defense, saying just because something is newsworthy doesn't mean you can defame somebody. This morning, a Dominion spokesperson declined to comment on the Wall Street Journal's reporting. Fox News didn't respond to a request for comment. A press release from the court says the judge will make a statement on the case delay at 9 a.m. Eastern time. It says jury selection will continue tomorrow at 9 a.m. If this trial does proceed, it's expected to last five to six weeks. Lindsay Watts, ABC News, Wilmington, Delaware. And Heiser Bush is hoping a new ad campaign for Budweiser will help the company during a current boycott. The backlash started after a Bud Light partnership with transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney. Now the new ad features the nostalgia of an iconic Clydesdale galloping through all American landscapes with men grabbing a couple of cold ones. Bud Light's marketing director has said the brand is in decline and needs to evolve and be more inclusive. Happening today, nearly 30,000 athletes from more than 100 countries will take part in the 127th Boston Marathon. The weather is expected to be less than cooperative with rain and headwinds sure to cause problems. The race will include 264 members of the One Fund community, survivors of the 2013 bombing, along with friends and family of the victims. The money raised is for related causes. The city marks 10, marked rather 10 years since the bombing last Saturday. Time now is 6.08 and it's 52 degrees right now. Still to come, an urgent search underway for three American sailors missing after setting sail off the coast of Mexico. What we're now learning ahead in your GMA first look. And trending right now after the break, a look at some of the stories on our website at kset.com that have a lot of people buzzing this morning. And outside with live cam, we were saying earlier that you might want a jacket this morning. Yeah, go ahead and grab one just in case. You probably won't regret it, but it's a beautiful start to our work week out there. You're seeing the uh, lights of Loop 410 
all on the San Antonio's north side. Be right back. Welcome back. It's 612 and trending right now. We want to hear from you so you can share your photos and videos of wildlife, flowers, state parks, swimming holes, events, and more on KSAT Connect. We may use them for a story online or on air. Just visit KSAT Connect on your computer phone or KSAT app and select Outdoors under Channels. There you can connect with other KSAT readers and viewers and share your pics or videos. You may even find a new place to visit. We also have the details on our homepage. Speaking of pictures, lots of you sent in pictures of that stunning mushroom shaped cloud. It was spotted as the sun was setting Saturday night around the San Antonio metro area. Many KSAP viewers were quick to capture it. So why did it look like that? Well, meteorologist Sarah Spivey breaks it all down for us. She says the crazy mushroom, mushroom sh shaped cloud happened after a front wiped away the humidity and moved, that moved through the Alamo City. And the conditions were perfect to see what is typically called a classic cumulonimbus cloud. Big old thunderstorm that was traveling <laughs> south of San Antonio. All eyes were on that. That's right. We're glad it wiped away the humidity. And this story has been number one on our website all night long. So who is Peso Pluma? Well, he continues to skyrocket to fame, topping the global top 50 charts on Spotify and dethroning Bad Bunny as the most streamed artist in Mexico. So even though the 23-year-old has risen to fame alone, he has already collaborated with big name artists, even joining Becky G at Coachella. Peso Pluma is set to perform in San Antonio during his Doble P tour at the Majestic Theater in September. Time now, just about 614. Go ahead and check back with Stephen. Roads still look good from this angle. Yeah, I'll give it a thumbs up. You know, not a bad way to start the work week as we get things rolling here. 37 at Houston. You can see it's pretty much stayed consistent for the last uh, two hours, really, guys. But uh, just watch out. We do still have some incidents to be on the lookout for. We'll get to that in just a moment. But 37 at I-10, not a bad shot. And there at 410 near Somerset, traffic is moving along just fine for everyone that is heading out and getting the day started early with us. But as I mentioned, we do at least have a minor incident reported here at 35 northbound. It's a stalled vehicle and it's not causing any delays with traffic. But if you see those flashing lights from the vehicle on move over or slow down, let's also hope a text hero truck can get out there and help that driver out. Very helpful resource. But giving you a wide look at the metropolitan area, this has pretty much been the color of the morning. Lots of green out there and plenty of construction. But I mentioned we want to take a look at some of those gas prices. Yeah, never fun to look at that, but always good to know what you can expect before you head to the pump. Bear County as of today, the average gas price, according in a triple A is three dollars and thirty five cents and around the state where we are seeing about three dollars and thirty six cents and for our friends and neighbors around the country three dollars and sixty seven cents is the average gas price. Now I just uh, was doing a little bit of digging there in the triple A website. It doesn't look like Texas is one of the most expensive markets as of last week, but those numbers aren't necessarily what people want to see. It's still a pretty big in increase from what we've been seeing over the last month or so. So always good to know before you have to head to the pump, uh, hoping for some relief soon. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. Yes, you know, back great. to that cloud, mm -hmm. the, the, that thunderstorm that developed down there in Atascosa County. That's when you were looking at it, and it's hard to kind of measure this. That's as high as airplanes fly, commercial airliners. And oh, sometimes absolutely. those get even higher. The oh, really, wow. really strong ones can get 40, 50, 60,000 feet that high. And those are powerful. So. I was looking out the window and then checking our app and looking at it on radar yeah. and watching hail form inside of it. I mean, it was a big old thunderstorm. And in the middle of those things, I mean, it's almost like a chimney. The winds are going straight yep. up in those. And that's why a lot of times you get hail because the winds are go up there. It very cold freezes and it just keeps them up there mm. like that until they're too heavy and they, they fall down and it starts to collapse. But yeah, that was a beautiful, beautiful yeah. sight out there. A lot of pictures that Saturday. we received. Yeah, probably except if you were right underneath that thing. It was <laughs> Not so oh. pretty. Yeah. Yeah different story. Uh, this morning temperatures grab a jacket. We're in the 40s and 50s around here. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous morning. It's 79 then for a high temperature. A couple of extra clouds here and there. Maybe a shower out to the west, but the air is so dry. I think anything that uh, falls will probably be evaporating before it ever reaches the ground, but just don't be surprised if there is a little sprinkle out there. All right, love this picture. You need to stand in front of this picture. Oh, I would, I would match. Because, I mean, yeah, here, come on over here. Stand in front of this. Match the, uh, the little <laughs> flowers there. But that is a white-lined sphinx moth taking the night pollinator shift Let me see. on a, a fuchsia. So here, Let's see. Match, the, match the colors. Oh, the wow, flowers. I like that. That's a vibe. Look at that. <laughs> 
Thank you, Steph. Thank, <laughs> Thank you very you, much Mike. for the KSAC Connect picture. <laughs> All right, a lot of clear skies out there right now. Look at, we're already starting to see the glow of the sunrise, and there is the crescent moon. And just as the sun is starting to come up, if you see a little star, what looks like a star right next to the sun, that's going to be uh, the planet Jupiter. So watch out for that over there. All right, jumping ahead. This is actually the first weekend, basically, of Fiesta, and starting going into next week. As you can see, we've got a better odds of being slightly cooler than normal temperatures. That doesn't mean it's going to be on the cold side, but this is just kind of what the odds are of that. And then also taking into account maybe a slightly better than 50-50 chance of seeing a little bit of precipitation. Then as we go into the end of the month and got odds of even though small chance and odds are leaning toward staying on the cooler side of normal and as far as rain chances uh, about a 55th percent chance for some precipitation. So it is nice to see that at least temperatures will be down somewhat a little bit below normal or at least the odds of that and maybe a couple of showers here and there 53 here in town low 40s in parts of the hill country right now and again a couple of clouds that are going to be trying to slide on in here later on today especially out to the west this model does not pick up anything as far as uh, any precipitation out there to the west but maybe a stray shower or two. Then we go into the overnight hours and a couple of showers here or there are going to start to pick up by the morning. We are going to have a few showers around and then also with all the moisture that's going to be streaming on in here, we will have a lot of some mist and a little bit of drizzle around the area and even a couple of uh, showers or a stray storm throughout the day tomorrow. And that's going to be the situation on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday. It's nice right now with that low humidity, but then watch what happens overnight. It just surges back on in here. So you're definitely going to notice the humidity tomorrow, like I said, with some mist and drizzle, and that's just going to be sticking around. Now, the upper level low up here around the Great Lakes, that's what pulled that front through on Saturday. The dry air, first of all, that front, that's what that's what spawned that uh, small or excuse me that huge storm down there. It was a small area on the map, but big, big storm right around Atascosa County as well as well off to the east in uh, eastern Gonzalez County yesterday or excuse me on Saturday. Then we get into the next few days. We're going to have uh, warmer temperatures. We're going to continue to warm up as we go on in toward the end of the week and this next low up there to the north. Notice how everything now is we're getting into spring instead of really dropping down here. Everything stays across the northern portion of the country, but this should help to throw another front through here by Saturday to knock temperatures down because we are going to continue. It will be a little bit lower as far as temperatures tomorrow. Then we start the increase toward the end of the week. So 73 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies. High temperature then makes it up to 79, mostly sunny. A shower out to the west is possible, although not very likely. And then the next few days, a lot of humidity. You'll notice it tomorrow morning when you head outside 75 tomorrow, but then 85 Thursday for the start of Fiesta 90 on Friday, but cooler and drier air by the weekend. Okay, humidity for a couple of days of Fiesta. We can handle that. Yes, hopefully it stays out of here for the rest of Fiesta, but okay, we can we can hope. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you, Mike. 620 53 degrees. All right, speaking of Fiesta, we are getting closer to the location reveal and where you can get your hands on a KSAT medal. Still to come on GMSA, which HEB you need to go to to get one this morning. So keep it right here. We're going to share that location in our next half hour. Trilogy for COPD. Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting on by, you know how I feel. You don't have to take COPD <laughs> sitting down. It's a new dawn, it's a new day. It's time to make a stand. And I'm feeling good. Start a new day with Trilogy. No one's daily COPD medicine has the power to treat COPD in as many ways as Trilogy. With three medicines and one inhaler, Trilogy makes breathing easier for a full 24 hours, improves lung function, and helps prevent future flare-ups. Trilogy won't replace a rescue inhaler for sudden breathing problems. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure before taking it. Do not take Trilogy more than prescribed. Trilogy may increase your risk of thrush, pneumonia, and osteoporosis. Call your doctor if worsened breathing, chest pain, mouth or tongue swelling, problems urinating, vision changes or high pain occur. Take a stand and start a new day with Trilogy. Ask your doctor about Once Daily Trilogy and save at Trilogy.com.
In this morning's GMA first look, new details from the Coast Guard on those three American sailors missing off the coast of Mexico, setting sail from the city of Mazatlan nearly two weeks ago. They have not been sighted since. An urgent search now underway for Kerry and Frank O'Brien and William Gross, who were sailing from Mexico to San Diego when they disappeared. Investigators now wondering if high winds and waves might have played a role in the disappearance. At that time, those environmental conditions would certainly have played a role in the voyage of any sailboat. Family members saying the trio are extremely experienced sailors, pleading with the public for any help in locating their loved ones. I have not been out of contact with my father pretty much my entire life. Uh, we are incredibly close. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have the latest live from Mexico on this urgent search. With your GMA First Look, I'm Matt Rivers, ABC News, Mexico City. In today's Tech Bytes, Google is reportedly working on an all-new search engine. The New York Times says Google will be powered by artificial intelligence in hopes of offering a far more personalized experience. Google is also reportedly working on several new AI features for its existing search engine. Elon Musk has started a new artificial intelligence company. The existence of X.AI follows recent reports of Musk buying equipment to power AI products. Just recently, Musk signed a letter calling for a pause on giant artificial intelligence experiments. And frustrated fans were stood up by the Love is Blind reunion. Netflix aired the show over an hour late, and it was not live as promised. It was all apparently due to technical issues. It's only the second time Netflix has tried to carry a live event. Those are your Tech Bites. I'm Rhiannon and Allie. Have a great day. And many students are very familiar with what's about to happen this week, but these teachers are making it fun. So star, star testing starts tomorrow, and this video was sent to us to help get kids motivated for the exams. Now it's sent to us by Nellie Marcus, a fifth grade teacher at Wortham Oaks Elementary School. This is with Judson ISD. They did a phenomenal job on this video of pumping the kids up for the star test, which starts tomorrow. And it was what, 80s day that day? <laughs> I, I love, I love the outfits. Yeah. Everybody's very coordinated a there. Lot of neon going on there. <laughs> but what's old good. is new again, right, Steph? Exactly. Um, I was going to say my little girl, you know, is wearing neon pink oh, bows yeah. and little fishnet gloves. I'm like, hey, where'd you, where'd where'd you, get, you get those that from? from? 1982? <laughs> yeah. Nope, 2023. Yes. 626, 52 degrees. Let's look out the rows with Trans Guide at I-37 at Loop 410. Things look good there. And again, wishing all the kiddos at Wortham, Oaks Elementary, and all the kids across the state of Texas good luck on the STAR test this week. A road rage shootout on the city's northwest side ends with a six-month-old injured. I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA. What we know about the child's condition this morning. A mix of day and night out there right now. Beautiful crescent moon and the gorgeous orange hues of a Monday morning sunrise. Welcome back, 6.30 on your Monday, April 17th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, it looks beautiful out there, and it feels pretty good, too. Uh, we're in the 50s this morning, a nice, cool morning. It is. Going to need a jacket, at least for a little while. Mike Ostrage is here with that, and a preview of our Fiesta forecast. How long have we been waiting to say that? Right? I, I, right. I know. I mean, it's two days away, three days away till it begins on Thursday, but nice way to start a Monday morning, you know, yeah. and it's continuation of what we had around here yesterday. Yes, there is the beautiful crescent moon. It is a waning crescent. It's going to be a new moon on Thursday and very shortly just after a couple of minutes after seven o'clock, the sun's going to be uh, peeking over the horizon and we should see Right before that happens, hopefully Jupiter is going to be a little uh, bright star there right as the sun is coming up as well. So temperatures, yeah, grab a jacket, 53, dew point 42, very, very dry air. Once that dry air finally moved on in here late Saturday afternoon, yeah, it was gorgeous and beautiful yesterday. No wind to speak of as of right now. 50 in Holotus, 41 now Comfort, 49 Hondo, 52 at Stinson as well as Port SA. And everybody has this beautiful dry air in place. And with the air so dry, if there is a shower that tries to pop up out to the west today, it's probably going to be evaporating before it ever reaches the ground. Oak is still on the high side. Mold is moderate. The updated count is going to come out in about an hour or so. So clear, cool this morning. And then later on this afternoon, plenty of sunshine, a couple of extra 
extra clouds here and there. And again, a shower to the west. Like I said, I think most of it would evaporate before it reached the ground. Humidity, it's a whole different story. Enjoy today because humidity is going to come back in here overnight. So we'll have some morning mist and drizzle with all that humidity coming in here. Maybe even a couple of uh, showers scattered about the area in the afternoon. That's going to be the case throughout the rest of the week. A lot of humidity around here. We will continue to warm up getting up to 90 by Friday and then another front moves through here. So it's going to get rid of uh, those 90s and get rid of the humidity for the weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. Good thing you haven't had much to talk about, have you? Not today, but um, you know, we definitely want to keep a close eye on things throughout the morning. Mike 410 at WW White is, I wouldn't say a major problem, but check out that traffic out there. It's uh, definitely getting busier, but we see flashing lights. That does appear to be a TxDOT Hero truck. Now, I haven't seen anything reported on TransGuide or, pardon me, TxDOT just yet, but we know that there are a few stalls out there, so check your vehicles before you get the morning rolling and make sure that anytime you see those flashing lights, move over or slow down. That is the law. Let's go ahead and take you to a stall that's still being reported here, though, off of 35 Northbound at Eisenhower Road. This has not been causing any issues, but we can expect to see some red start to build up on the map as the morning commute does get busy. And in fact, that's what we're already starting to see here. US 90 eastbound as you're traveling in from Castroville. It's always that spot that tends to get pretty busy first, but no issues have been reported in the area. That's just typical congestion. So if you're traveling in from Castroville, you can expect to have some delays in the next few minutes or so. That is normal, but let's get it back here where traffic is moving at a slow rated speed, but just remember to uh, slow down anytime you see those uh, flashing lights out there. Looks like a Texas hero truck again on the scene to help that driver out. Let's hope for a better update, but for now the roads are looking fine elsewhere around town. No other issues to talk about guys. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a six month old baby is injured in a road rage shooting on the city's northwest side. This happened last night at the intersection of Tesla and Gilboa Roads and our Sarah Costa is live near Tesla Road and Sarah. Do we know how the infant is doing this morning? Good morning, Stephanie and police did tell us that that a baby was transported to the hospital in stable condition and police believe that the child is going to be okay after being injured by a piece of shrapnel. This all happening in a road rage shootout incident that happened that ended here near the intersection of Tezel and Gilbo. One car crashing on Gilbo, the other pulling over here on Tezel. This happening just after nine last night. Police say two vehicles involved hit each other several times with their cars. That's when guns got involved and the drivers in both vehicles began shooting at each other. SAPD says those drivers fired off several gunshots at one another. No one was hit by those bullets. One of the vehicles only had the driver in it. The other police say had a mother and a six month old in it. The child was hit by shrapnel. The mother was not injured, but went with the child to University Hospital by ambulance. Like we said earlier, police believe that child will be OK. Now, police have detained both of those drivers involved in this road rage shooting. At this time, we don't know how know the charges, but as soon as we know the charges that those two drivers will be facing in the condition of the child this morning, we will update you on air and online. Live from the northwest side, I'm Sarah Costa, Case at 12 News. Mark and staff. This morning we're hearing from the family of Ramon Najera. The 81 year old was killed in February by a pack of dangerous dogs. As Lee Waldman reports, now they are fighting for legislative changes to dangerous dog laws. It is a story you'll only see on KSAT. Dad, um, he was a military man. He started out, you know, in the military, you know, he got out of high school and joined the military. You can see a lot of Ramon Najera and his son Raymond between their green thumbs and frugality. A coupon king, so he always carried those coupon books wherever he went. Raymond's father is still with him, even though he was taken February 24th after several pit bulls attacked Ramon and his wife. Raymond's stepmom is still recovering. She has that fear it's going to be something's going to come up on her and you know, just the way that she was attacked. Their family is turning that pain to action, traveling to Austin to speak on behalf of Texas House Bill 4759, authored by Liz Campos at a public hearing. HB 4759 allows for witnesses to remain anonymous when animal care services investigates incidents. And once a dog is deemed dangerous, the report is turned over to local courts to prosecute as a class C misdemeanor as a first offense and third degree felony for repeated offenses. There may be small changes, but there's significant changes. He'll be sharing his father's story, right, right. hoping it'll appeal to lawmakers so they back this bill and hopefully 
keep this tragedy from happening to another family. If it does become law, it'll bear his dad's name. It's a um, bittersweet. You know, he's gone. But his name will still be, you know, archived in, in Texas, Texas State. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. The public hearing is happening today for Texas House Bill 4759. People, uh, Raymond rather, is asking people to stand with him and call their representatives to back the bill. Two other pieces of legislation have been filed by San Antonio area lawmakers related to dangerous dogs, not only here in San Antonio, but across the state. We have information on those bills on KSAT.com. U.S. Supreme Court is facing the most significant abortion-related dispute since Roe v. Wade was overturned last summer. The justices are considering a lower court ruling that would place restrictions on access to an abortion drug. The decision could come this week. Numerous abortion rights rallies were held over the weekend, and both sides remain drawn. In my state, we are a pro-life state. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a legislation, we have legislation which is far more pro-life than it is in, say, California. Uh, but the Californians keep their law and we keep our law and that's the way it's gonna work out nationally. If any Republican thinks that voters have uh, simmered down on right. the abortion issue, they are wrong. It's gonna, uh, that, that is gonna continue uh, well into the next presidential race. The FDA has been the only authority in the U.S. to regulate drugs since the start of the 20th century. It was created in 1906 to enforce the Pure Food and Drug Act, which aims to make sure items like food and medicine are safe. The world's most powerful rocket ever could launch in a couple of hours. Elon Musk's Starship is the largest, most powerful rocket ever built. If everything goes as planned, Starship will launch from Texas this morning at eight, then minutes later leave the atmosphere before completing a partial lap of the planet and splashing down near Hawaii. Unlike many previous launches, the company is not trying to recover parts of the spacecraft or booster. In this case, it wants the rocket stages to sink to the bottom of the ocean so that no one can retrieve the technology. Right now, 639, 52 degrees. And we are getting closer to the location reveal and where you can get your hands on a KSAT medal. Still to come on GMSA, which HEB you need to go to to get one this morning. So keep it right here. We're going to share that address in just a few minutes. And tickets to Fiesta are going fast. You can catch the Battle of Flowers Parade while being a part of our KSAT viewing party. Besides having a great seat, you get two tacos and a drink and access to private restrooms. We have all the ticket info on KSAT.com. If you're still waiting to do your taxes, you have just hours left. Tomorrow is the deadline. And if you own cryptocurrency, there are some things you need to know that could affect your taxes. ABC's Alexis Christophorus explains. Most filers when doing taxes this year will have to check a box on whether they had digital assets or not. For federal tax purposes, digital assets are treated as property. Even if you did not sell or move any digital currency, if you simply possess it, you want to make sure that you check it check that correctly. If you do have digital assets, you might have received a crypto tax statement from the exchange platform you've been using. I think that surprises people because they think that crypto is supposed to be so anonymous. There actually are some pretty tight regulations on the services that let you buy and sell. If you lost money in crypto in 2022, you could actually use that to offset up to $3,000 in income. And if you were paid in virtual currency for a job, that needs to be reported on your taxes. Income is income. So it doesn't matter where it comes from. You want to make sure that you report it on your taxes and not doing so is uh, not following the law. And what about NFTs, non-fungible tokens? It's really the sale component that would be significant. So if you're selling it, especially if you're making a sizable profit, like that would be the taxable event, not just buying and collecting, you know, as a hobby, but but actually making money off the sale of it. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. Time check 644. Let's check back with our Stephen Cavazos. Yep, gorgeous shot behind me here. 281 at St. Mary's. It looks like the sun is peeking out over the buildings, but uh, watch out as the commute does get rolling. We know 281 north and southbound tends to get very busy as people get out and get the day started. So, but right now, looks like you're in the clear and you have a nice view to enjoy as well. Taking you right here, though, we still have that incident off of 410, and it looks like it could be in the northbound lanes at South WW White. We brought this to you a little bit earlier. It appears it is a stall vehicle, but right now, none 
nothing has been reported. So we will label that as an incident and we're going to see that buildup really take place in the northbound lanes there on the southeast side of town. So watch out as the commute does get rolling. We see those flashing lights out there still and I have to take a drive up over here to 35 northbound at Eisenhower Road where we had that stall reported earlier. That's not been causing any issues. Just be on the lookout for that and be on the lookout for tech stop crews within the next few minutes or so because we are going to see some uh, utility work there along Northwest Military Highway. Now remember this is going to take us up to the end of the work week April 21st. The work begins in the next few minutes should last pretty much all day to six in the evening. We will see alternating lane closures in both directions from Loop 1604 to Hebner Road, but plan your commute ahead of time and watch out here 281 at St. Mary's. Good news is the view is pretty nice. All right, Stephen, we've been talking about it all morning. Mm -hmm. It is time for the update on the location of where you can get today's KSAP Fiesta medal. Starting this morning at 8 o'clock sharp, you can get one at the HEB at 9238 North Loop 1604 West. That's the HEB Plus at 1604 and Bandera Road. Again, that starts this morning at 8 o'clock while supplies last. Yeah, time to drive over there right Good now. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> that's the HEB that's like an airplane hanger. Can have yes. a 747 yes. in it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. yeah it's it's like one. two or three hangers put together. Yeah. yeah uh, you oh, have to, it's, yeah. It takes you about three days to walk from one side to the other. Oh, <laughs> so. nice. A lot of shopping. Overwhelmed to do by the bread. Anyway, uh, if you're heading out to grab a medal, going off to work or school, grab a jacket. And I love this picture. Oh. Yes, yesterday was a beautiful day to see a cardinal. Pretty. He's a gorgeous, gorgeous little bird. Thank you so much for that KSAC Connect picture, Irma. Appreciate that. All right, doesn't get much better than this. Look at that beautiful, the clear sky. Sun's going to be popping over the horizon in about uh, 15 minutes or so. We had that little sliver of a moon, and it's behind that banner up there as of right now. You may see, if you see a little star right by the sun coming up, that's going to be uh, the planet Jupiter. It's right next door to us. You may not be able to uh, make it out. 53 in town, 41, definitely cold in Comfort, 49 Hondo, Uvalde, as well as Randolph and Seguin. Pleasanton's at 47 degrees right now. Dry air and as a matter of fact, compared to this time yesterday, dew point temperatures and sort of the measure of moisture in the atmosphere are identical to what it was yesterday. Now, when I show this graphic tomorrow morning, it's going to be a whole different situation. We've got dew points in the 40s right now. We should be seeing about 20, 25 uh, degree difference, 15, 20 degree difference uh, in 25 in some cases. So that's how much the humidity and the dew points are going to be uh, jumping up in the overnight hours by tomorrow. So a lot of sunshine today. One or two little clouds out there. If there's a stray sprinkle that pops up out to the west, great, but I think the air is too dry to see anything reach the ground. And we'll have, again, a cloud or two here or there. Clouds come in here overnight. A couple of showers as well. Moisture continues to sweep on in here, so we're going to have all that mist and drizzle around here. Even a, uh, a couple of showers, perhaps a thunderstorm hanging around, and that's going to be the situation in the morning hours and even by the afternoon with these little disturbances sliding across here. And obviously more moisture in the atmosphere, so anything that does crop up is definitely going to be able to make it down here to the surface. And we keep clouds around pretty much all day tomorrow. I think a little bit of sunshine limited in here, but that's going to be the extent of it. And that's going to be the case Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Not much changes. Humidity stays very high all the way through the end of the week. And then that next front moves on through here, and that's going to get rid of the humidity very nicely by the weekend. So we'll have temperatures that we're going to actually be down a bit tomorrow, but then we that stair step each and every day leading up to 90 by Friday. 70s over the weekend. Low temperatures will be doing the same thing with all that humidity staying up there in the mid upper 60s, low 70s, and then they drop down. So it'll be jacket weather again by the uh, by the weekend. Yeah, good looking weekend setting up. Maybe a leftover shower or two by early Saturday morning. 73 degrees, mostly sunny skies at noon today. High temperature up to 79. The normal average is 81, mostly sunny again. A shower is possible off to the west. I really doubt it, and most everything would evaporate before it ever reaches the ground. Going into tomorrow, whole different story in the morning. Mist, drizzle, uh, even a couple of showers with a lot more humidity. 75 will start off at 60, so roughly 10 degrees warmer tomorrow morning. Uh, 80, then 85, then 90, so each and every day gets hotter. A lot of humidity around here for the start of uh, Fiesta on Thursday. And then that front comes on through. Maybe a leftover shower or in the overnight hours early Saturday morning, but uh, looks pretty nice this weekend with lower humidity and cooler. Well, at least the weekend Fiesta events will be Nice and not humid. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Thanks, Mike.
649, 52 degrees. Let's look out there with live cam. Looks good and it feels good out there. Nice and cool. Like Mark said, 52 degrees. But go ahead and grab that light sweater if you're going to spend some time out there. We'll be back with one last of, uh, check of weather and traffic after the break. Coming up here on GMA, we begin the power of water and rivers across America, talking about the Mississippi River and the Delta, also these islands in the wetlands of Louisiana. Behind me, a boat that we'll be taking out to show you Isle de Jean Charles. It is one of the communities, well, the first in America to be displaced by a rising sea and several other factors. We'll tell you about the island that went from five miles wide back in the 1950s to now only a quarter mile square. On top of all of that, there's much to get to in the fallout from the Pentagon leak. What we're learning this morning about Chinese spy balloons, more of them, and the search for answers after a mass shooting at an Alabama Sweet 16 party. We're live on the scene there this morning. You'll see those stories and so much more right here on GMA. A reminder about where you can get the KSAT Fiesta Medal this morning starting at 8 o'clock. You can get one at the HEB at 9238 North Loop 1604 West. That's the HEB at 1604 and Bandera Road. Get them while supplies last. And good luck, everybody out there. More giveaways to come in the coming days. Fiesta doesn't even start till. Thursday. I know, and uh, the humidity will start as well. We'll check in with Mike in just a minute. But I'm looking at the roads, and things look pretty good at I 10 and Camp Bullis and around the area where people yeah. will be driving to hopefully get their metal by oh, 8 a.m. Yeah, we know that that's probably where we're going to see a line of people. But here on the roadways, guys, things are looking great. 10 at Camp Bullis. You can see the east and westbound lanes are pretty quiet, at least for now. But morning rush has started. We're going to start to see some incidents and some slowdowns. Watch out here. 410 northbound at South WW White. We still have that one incident we saw in Trans guide earlier. Looks like some improvement though on the northbound lanes, uh, but still this stall reported in the northbound lanes of 35 at Eisenhower Road. Other than that, we can see some congestion building on the northeast side of our map as people are making their way in from Live Oak as well as 1604 on the far west side. It is a gorgeous start this morning. I enjoy it because it's not going to look like this the rest of the week. We've got a lot of clear skies out there. Cool temperatures, 53 in town, low 40s in parts of the hill country, 52 at Stinson and Bulverde right now at 44. Going to warm up quickly this morning, make it up to 73 by noon. Uh, a shower is possible off to the west, just a mention of it. The air is so dry, I think anything that falls would be evaporating before it reaches the ground. Also, the wind's going to be out of the southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. So that's going to begin the return of the humidity. Humidity is going to come back in here overnight, and we'll have a lot of humidity <laughs> mist drizzle around tomorrow morning. A couple of showers here and there throughout the day, 75 oh. degrees. And then notice how things go up good five degrees each and every day 90 wow. on Friday 85 for the start of Fiesta down there at Travis Park and on Thursday evening and then that next front's going to move through here and clear us out at least for the weekend but yeah it's going to get hotter and more humid this week mm. dress comfortably for mm -hmm. Fiesta Fiesta on Thursday yep for any of the events on Friday but this weekend you know, yeah the weekend looks, nicer. looks pretty nice okay fantastic nice. <laughs> thanks for joining us today have a good Monday we're back at nine